the year is 2008. KD4 just came out a couple of months ago to mostly negative reviews. Ubuntu has one of the best wallpapers it has ever had. And the housing market just imploded. Also, Debian announced an insane vulnerability in OpenSSL. Predictable random number generation. CVE 2008 0166. This patch in Debian and Ubuntu effectively limited the number of possible keys to a few 10,000 plausible variations. This meant that a lot of systems out there were running the exact same key. Now, this can happen if it's working correctly. There's only a certain number of possible key variations. It shouldn't be common though. This right here is a write-up by Hanno Bock. 16 years of CVE 2008-0166 Debian OpenSSL bug breaking DKIM and BIMI in 2024. To celebrate the 16th anniversary of this discovery, I'm hereby disclosing that many DKIM setups still use keys vulnerable to this bug in 2024. This also affects BIMI due to a poorly designed specification. These are 16 year old minimum. The bug actually was introduced back in 2006, so it's possible 18 year old vulnerable keys that are still in use today. Now, a couple of terms here. DKIM stands for Domain Keys Identified Mail. This is an authentication method to make sure that an email doesn't have a forged sender address. BIMI stands for Brand Indicators for Message Identification. This basically allows brands to attach a logo to their emails and then on supported clients like Gmail, it'll show up next to the email as an avatar like it would on a direct messaging platform. If you'd like to hear the author himself discuss this, this will be presented at Mini DevConf in Berlin in just a few days. So if you happen to be there, go check it out. So, DKIM keys vulnerable to the Debian OpenSSL bug. By scanning DKIM keys with my tool Bad Keys, I discovered a surprisingly large number of hosts vulnerable to the 2008 Debian OpenSSL bug. Remember, this is not host back in 2008. This is host in 2024. This trivially allowed sending emails with forged DKIM signatures for those hosts and thereby also passing DMARC checks. The hosts included notable names like Cisco.com, Oracle.com, Skype.net, GitHub.partners, Partner.CrowdStrike.com, and SaysName.cc. This one at the time of writing remained unfixed. So how many keys were actually vulnerable? Well, by scanning the train code top 1 million list, this is a list of sites hardened against manipulation. 355,055 TXT records with a valid RSA key were discovered. Those are not the ones that were vulnerable. Of the records with RSA keys, 855 were vulnerable to the CVE, around 0.24%. 777 records contained identical keys. Overall, there were 22 unique keys. Of this set, there shouldn't be any unique keys. Of a set of 355,055 records, there should be 0.00% that are the same key. And an additional 21 records with vulnerable keys were discovered through other methods. The worst part about it is most of the identical keys were from one company, that being CakeMail. I tried disclosing this issue to CakeMail. The affected host has a security.txt file with a security contact address and a link to a PGP key that does not work. After trying to contact their email, I got this error message. We're writing to let you know the group you tried to contact security may not exist or may not have permission to post messages to the group. Therefore, I did not directly contact Cake Mail, but they appear to replace their DKIM key. I have disclosed this issue to many affected organizations. Some have probably contacted Cake Mail. Now you're probably gonna rightfully ask, why are people using keys with a vulnerability from 2008 in 2024? I can only speculate, but it may have to do with the timing. The Debian OpenSSL bug was introduced in 2006. It was discovered and fixed in 2008. The DKIM specification was published as RFC 4871 in 2007. DKIM has no requirement to rotate keys. It appears that a sizable number of companies configured DKIM TXT records in 2007 and then never changed them. 
And considering the fact there are a lot of companies out there that have some random magical server sitting in a closet somewhere and don't know what it does, but they know that if they turn it off, something bad is going to happen. That doesn't surprise me, to be fair. Now, as for SezName, SezName CZ being unfixed, this is a check search engine and email provider. And they did not believe me when I reported this issue. They assumed they are not actively using that key. That means it cannot be used to forge emails. This is, of course, not true. Honestly, what he should have done is sent them an email using their broken key just to show that, yes, your key is still vulnerable. Go and fix it. Now, whilst doing this, this is not the only vulnerability that was discovered. I found some RSA keys with very short key sizes, some with 512 bits, some even smaller. Those can be broken on consumer hardware these days. I have not looked closer into this. I also found some unparsable or defective keys. You know, keys that are just not going to be used to do the authentication. Generally, large parts of the DKIM ecosystem use substandard cryptographic security. The majority of DKIM keys use RSA with 1024 bits. The standard recommendation for RSA keys is to use a minimum key size of 2048. While it has been assumed that powerful attackers may be able to break 1024-bit RSA for more than 20 years, such attacks have not been publicly documented. So, it's okay to do that, but you should just go with the recommendation of considerably bigger. Now, this issue with Debian and this issue with DKIM leads us directly into the issue with BIMI. What is BIMI? It is a money-making scheme invented by certificate authorities. What is BIMI really? BIMI allows publishing a logo in SVG format that some email services will display alongside your emails. While not strictly required by the specification, usually that will only happen if you buy an expensive certificate, the so-called verified mark certificate, that asserts that this is your logo. Those certificates are very expensive, above $1,000 per year. If we're talking about a big company like Shopify, Spotify, Google, things like that, it's not that expensive, but yeah, for the average person, you're not going to be paying for this. Now, the key knight among you may have noticed these email subjects and thought, hmm, that seems really weird for these brand emails to be sending. Well, what does Bimmy have to do with this vulnerability? While testing to send DKIM signed emails, I noticed that some would show a company logo in Gmail. Bimmy is designed in a way that when you publish a default Bimmy record, all DKIM signed emails will automatically get Bimmy treatment and show a logo. In some cases, I only controlled the DKIM key of a subdomain, but even then, the Bimmy logo configured for the main domain is shown automatically. In other words, Having the BIMI logo there is not being signed with a separate key. Just having the DKIM key successfully signed adds the logo. But what about that whole expensive $1,000 plus cert? Doesn't that mean there needs to be some signature involved from that certificate? No. And I was very surprised by this. The BIMI spec is written in a way that there is no cryptographic connection between the certificate and the DKIM key. While BIMI certificates are standard X509 certificates that contain a cryptographic key, that key is not used at all. Certificate authorities in other areas, e.g. in the web PKI, are required to guarantee some basic security checking of cryptographic keys, disallow short RSA keys, and revoke known compromised keys. No such mechanisms exist for BIMI and DKIM. The following bit here is just an example of actually running the exploit. It's just a lot of keys, and if you want to look at it for yourself, feel free to go and do so. Are there any other security problems with BIMI? Yes. After learning about this, I started reading the specification. It is extremely weird and has obvious security design flaws. It does trustworthy things like explaining that certain things that are crucial for a secure implementation are explained elsewhere or in 
other documents without revealing where elsewhere is or where to find these other documents. Now, this linked to an email on the IETF mailing list. Possible security flaw in BIMI spec slash interaction of BIMI supporting non-BIMI supporting MDA. This was written by the same author, Hanno Bock. This is again a giant write-up explaining basically everything wrong with the specification from a security standpoint. Now, the funniest thing about the responses to this is nobody disagrees. These are subtle issues that one would expect to be addressed in the security considerations, except that this is a basic design flaw, not merely something needing a comment buried in the security consideration section. It highlights the reality that BIMI is a marketing protocol, not a security protocol, and there is nothing wrong with having a standard for the display of marketing information. But confusing it with anything related to security, however, is quite a significant problem. And the general takeaway from this mailing list is that most people are aware that this is just not a good protocol and probably needed some more time in the oven. But that is not going to stop the Bimmy Working Group and others like Google pushing ahead with this protocol regardless of whether or not it's a good idea. So if you're an email provider, should you implement Bimmy? No. If you develop an email client, should you implement Bimmy? It is impossible to implement BIMI in mail user agents in a secure way based on its specification. You need additional security measures that are explained elsewhere and in other documents. If you're developing a mail server, what should you do about BIMI? You could implement a BIMI troll mode by inserting a logo, say no to BIMI into emails with BIMI records configured. Maybe don't do this if you're developing this for like, public use, unless it's behind like a toggle, um, don't just implement that for regular users. Wait, that works? What about the certs and all that? How are you able to just change the logo? It would work in any mail user agent that implements the current version of the BIMI specification, however, I'm not aware of any that do. According to the specification, the mail server checks the certificate and sets those headers. The mail user agent should trust the mail transfer agent based on locally defined checks. It is not explained what that means. Possibly the explanation is elsewhere or in other documents. As you've probably guessed, it's not a great specification, so there are kind of ways to exploit it that lead to very amusing results. But what do you think? Are you surprised that there are still vulnerable keys floating around from 16 plus years ago used not on some random little website that nobody cares about, but by massive companies, some of which pride themselves on security? I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes Libero pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and make sure this doesn't become you.